Okay, so if you've read the news or you care about Marvel at all, you've probably heard what's happened to James Gunn. But if you don't, or you don't know who James Gunn is, here's the basic concept. So six years ago, Marvel was gearing up to create its Guardians of the Galaxy film. Now, this was a scary thing for them because the characters hadn't been depicted in cinema before. Characters that had names like Star-Lord and Drax, who we now picture as Chris Pratt and Dave Bautista, but back then, they were nowhere close to being as well known as Iron Man, Captain America, or even the Hulk. It was a sink or swim moment for the company, who, after being able to rely on its famous characters to get people paying for tickets, now had to hope that the Marvel name alone could be an indicator for quality. Basically, the film needed to be good. So Disney decided to bank the success of its only wholly original introduction in Phase 2 on an indie director with a cult following and a dark sense of humour, James Gunn. Coming off writing the infamous Scooby-Doo live-action films and directing strange, disturbing cult hits such as Super and Slither, he wasn't the most family-friendly choice from a traditionally family-friendly company. But Marvel was said to like his ability to mix comedy with action and horror. And as such, he became Marvel's one hope on proving that they could bring in the numbers on the reputations of themselves and not their characters. And it worked. Under James Gunn's direction, Guardians of the Galaxy was a surprise hit. The film became the third highest grossing film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe at the time, with audiences around the world enjoying the space romps and cheeky humour. And Marvel seemed happy enough to bring Gunn back to direct its sequel, a privilege reserved for only a few directors within their universe. And that went on to do even better at the box office. Gunn had crafted the riskiest introduction in the Marvel Universe into one of its strongest franchises. And as Disney's way of showing their gratitude, they fired him because of some tweets he wrote before he was even hired. Now, I want to make one thing clear, because I wouldn't mind directing a Marvel movie at some point, and I don't want Disney to rule me out because of something off-colour I might say, because apparently they do that. I don't think James Gunn's tweets were appropriate or in good taste, but as offensive as they are, the notion that an artist, specifically an artist that has given so much of themselves to this franchise, should have that all stripped away due to some poorly thought out humour, should be equally offensive to any person that values freedom of creative expression. Disney is a powerful company, and after plans to acquire one of its only five competitors, it's becoming even more powerful. A survey from Box Office Mojo of the 100 most recent films placed it combined with its new purchase Fox, as holding almost half of the box office gross in the entire world. This is a significant amount of power over the movie industry. If they'd fire a director over a tweet, you'd have to assume they're having a lot to say about the creation of the films themselves. It's no secret that, with the rise of major film studios, movies are losing their voice. Cinemas are inundated with sequels and franchises churned out for profit, with any chance of artistic expression being drowned out by a constant desire to appeal to everyone, lest they sacrifice the bottom line. James Gunn is not the first casualty of an industry that is now bulking at the innovation it used to embrace. Films like Solo, Fantastic, and basically the entire DCU have shown what happens when a studio doesn't like what its directors are doing, choosing to fracture projects for financial purposes in instead of allowing the artists they've hired to make the movies to, you know, make the movies. Now, I know what you're thinking. Making rape jokes on Twitter isn't exactly artistic expression. But, isn't it? We used to want to be challenged by art, to question our ideals and have our preconceived notions challenged. And if that means a few crude jokes on Twitter, then so be it, because it's much better than sitting in a theatre and experiencing the same film over and over and over again, with any creator who dares to try anything different being dropped by their studio and lambasted by the public for not delivering what they were expecting. Newsflash! Art is not meant to be predictable. It's meant to be the opposite of what you're expecting. And no, it's not always glamorous, but that's the point. The best films are the ones that change you. The best art is unpredictable and created for passion, not for profit. So, Disney, let artists make art. And if you're not going to commit to hiring these risky yet rewarding personalities, then go off and hire one of the thousands of run-of-the-mill filmmakers that will gladly bend over and churn out safe, inoffensive products. And I hope you enjoy the less than stellar box office returns. Because unlike you, I have faith in the people to crave unique experiences that challenge their worldview and surprise or even offend them. Because that's what film is all about. And I'm not ready to give up on it just yet.